it's almost like you can see the work of the hand of God when you're there. You know, the reality of the sky in relation to the land, the way that shadows are created when, when clouds scud across the sky. And you do sense something which is, you know, which is bigger. But I also think there's, there's a reality there which is to do with a place's atmosphere and its history. And when you have a, a landscape as, as rich as Flatford, uh, historically, you know, you've, you've had a whole series of artists working there. You are aware of its, of its power, but when you're walking down the, you know, the Stour Valley, you know, it's quite low, um, there's a big sky, you know, people would think, well, you look at the sky, there's nothing there. You can look at the veil of trees that, that, that don't as yet block out the river or block out the, the sort of receding horizontals in the landscape. And that, that's actually really sort of quite abstract. It's a, it's a kind of an abstract pattern that I'm, that I'm attracted to. And then you sort of see the river and the light is because of the brightness of the day. The light is reflected from the river. It's like this intense blue. They're not topographical paintings, really. You know, I do try to sort of go beyond that, try to get to the essence of a place. But you have to really stick with it and you have to scratch the surface before you understand its complexity. And it's a case of sticking with it and looking again and looking again and almost letting the landscape tell you You've just got to be present. This larger painting there, it's the same kind of elements, but somehow slightly more kind of abstracted, perhaps. You know, sort of interested in these gaps and spaces. So there's a sense of figuration, there's a sense of abstraction. That and that place, they're the same place, but because it's, it changes so much given the time of day and the season, uh, that's the interest. And the colours change so much. I was born in a place called Batley in West Yorkshire. My childhood was, was, was very happy. But the lovely thing about growing up at that time was that although it was industrial, you could get out into the countryside within 20 minutes walk. Or in my case, it would be 20 minutes running. And you're in the most beautiful and spoiled countryside. You turned round and you saw the mills and you saw the, the pit heads and I got to enjoy being in there uh, because it was so different from the kind of sometimes the grim reality of being, being in a weaving and mining town. So I, I got into an art school in South London to do my first degree and really for the first time I could spend every single day being, a, being an artist and that was quite a revelation. And then came the Slade. I hadn't found my language as an artist. They didn't teach you how to paint. You know, they didn't give you and it wasn't a technical school. It was a, a place where you developed ideas and you tried to find your own language. Finding what you want to paint and how you want to depict it takes a long time. So when I left the Slade, within a, within a couple of years, you know, I was married and then children came along. And it just seemed the most normal thing, because lots of artists had done it so in the past, was to paint your domestic situation. And of course it was painting the things that you love the most in the world. It's a painting of, of my son James um, sort of sitting on my shoulders. It's about the surface, it's about limited colour. And they're sort of celebratory. I mean, I was looking at the Camden Town School, really, and, and Walter Sickert and, and, and other artists as well. I mean, I think you can see really that it's not, a, it's not about photography. It's, it is, you know, the, 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 the similarity between this one and the, and the new paintings of the landscape is the surface, you know, the kind of the, the, the vigorousness of the surface and the marks. And again, it was just this very, you know, very quick, immediate way of trying to pin down a memory, which for me was more, more real than a photograph, you know? I think it's probably my favorite one. I, do, I like color, you know, I love color. 
I love what happens when you put colours together in terms of the way in which it depicts space. Plus it's, it slides around and it does things that you don't want it to do and it kind of fights back at you. I don't think you know when it's right, ever. I think that if you're lucky when you're making a painting, you can put the right mark at the right time using the right colour. There's no menu. There's, there's no recipe for that. And you're, you're, you're left, really, to your, own, to your own devices and your own sense of determination, I think, and your own energy. And you destroy and, and create. You know, you destroy a painting while you're doing it and then recreate it on the same, on the same canvas or the same board. I mean, it's every time you start a painting. I know it's, it sounds silly, but it's like you've never made one. Each one has got to be fresh. Each one has got to be different, you know, it is that they are unique things. I read sort of quite widely, I read the newspapers, but I can't make sense of the world by writing, by making images of the, of the world. I, I, can, I can tell people what it is I'm looking at and what it is I'm thinking. And it's the only way that I really can make sense of what's around me. When you're making a painting, when you're recollecting or recreating something that you've, that you've seen and you've been moved by, you know, it is like improvisation. And even though you think you've finished, I mean, you could always, you could always continue. I mean, it's, it's difficult to know when a painting is finished. You know, when somehow when it tries to communicate something back to you. You know, sometimes the painting will have a life of its own entirely and will take you down another, another channel, another area. And some, you know, with some, they become really quite abstract. Sometimes the, the paintings have become about a quality of light. Sometimes about shape. Sometimes about structure. And the painting can take you, can take you away. From, from all of that. You have to sort of keep you know, your intentions reasonably, reasonably clear, but you've got to also admit to the reality of the, of the making of the work. You know, they're two separate things. But when they, when they fuse together, it's possible to make something which, which is like a bit of magic, you know?